Hi, I'm Brooks Cash. I'm Chief of Gastroenterology and the Dan and Lily Sterling Professor of Medicine at the University of Texas Health Science Center at the Texas Medical Center in Houston, Texas. And it's my pleasure today to be talking to you about FAQs for H. pylori and really give you an update in terms of what's new in H. pylori diagnosis and management. I'm going to start out by stating a few facts of things that aren't new but that we all ought to keep in mind. And the first thing that I want to mention is that all patients with a positive H. pylori test should be treated. And that is a statement from the H. pylori guidelines put out by the American College of Gastroenterology in 2017, as well as multiple other H. pylori guidelines from other guideline issuing bodies. A couple other points that we should be aware of is that serologic testing for H. pylori to diagnose H. pylori is no longer recommended, and we should not be using serologic tests to diagnose H. pylori. Patients can remain positive even after successful eradication. It tells us that they've been infected sometime in the past, but that not that they have active infection. So it's really relatively worthless in a screening type of scenario. There are certain circumstances where it may be useful in a very high prevalence population. Uh, the other point that I wanted to make is that the recent guidelines that have been put out recommend against using clarithromycin-based triple therapy in patients who have received macrolide antibiotics at any point in their life because of the increasing resistance to clarithromycin, which is now probably about 30 to 35 percent of strains of H. pylori in the U.S., and also increasing resistance to metronidazole. The population prevalence of H. pylori is about 35 to 36 percent in the United States. So those are the things that I wanted to highlight in terms of what we know. Let's talk about some of the new information uh, that's come out in the last couple of years. And the first major advance that I want to talk about is this concept of what we call susceptibility testing. And what I mean by that is that we now have the availability or the ability to test uh, tissue, whether it's stool or uh, tissue from gastric biopsies, to determine the resistance patterns of H. pylori. This can be done in a couple of different ways. One is PCR technology. The other is something called next generation sequencing. PCR is generally available more in Europe and it tests for clarithromycin resistance, whereas next generation sequencing is available in the United States and tests for resistance of a whole host of antibiotics to include clarithromycin, but also metronidazole, uh, amoxicillin, rifibutin, uh, as well as several other antibiotics. And while still in its infancy, it is a proven technology, and I think over time this will likely become a standard of care, hopefully based on increasing insurance coverage and availability of this testing. This will help us tailor our diagnostic approach, or not our diagnostic, but our therapeutic approach to patients with Helicobacter pylori infection to use the right antibiotic regimen that's going to give us the best chances of success with regards to eradicating this infection. Now, the second uh, two uh, developments that I wanted to mention were the approval of two new regimens for H. pylori. The first regimen is a rifabutin containing regimen. This is called Talisha. This is a regimen that contains uh, omeprazole as well as rifabutin and amoxicillin all packaged in one pill. Patients take four pills three times a day for 14 days and the resistance patterns to rifabutin are basically zero with H. pylori and very low with amoxicillin. This is studied in two pivotal trials. One of these trials had an active comparator group of PPI versus high-dose amoxicillin uh, and showed superiority in terms of eradication of H. pylori in those patients treated with Talisha compared to that active comparator. A second study was what's called a confirmatory study, and that evaluated patients treated with Talisha to patients treated with placebo, and as you would imagine, uh, dramatically uh, superior rate of eradication. But importantly, what was shown in that pivotal trial was that the, the rates of eradication were very similar to what we're seeing uh, with Talisha in that active comparator trial. The second new therapeutic uh, approval with regards to an H. pylori therapy is Voquesna. And this is a new therapy that contains a PCAB known as venoprazan. That's a potassium competitive acid blocker 
This is an acid suppressive therapy that blocks or inhibits the potassium block or, uh, binding point in the hydrogen potassium ATPase and thus prevents acid secretion. This occurs at active acid pumps in the stomach. In terms of comparison to PPI therapy with regards to acid suppression, it's a more rapid acid suppression, a more durable or higher degree of acid suppression, and a longer lasting acid suppression. And that's important for two reasons. One, getting that intragastric pH up about six to eight induces a proliferation of H. pylori, and it makes it more susceptible to antibiotic therapy. The second reason is that raising the intragastric pH also prolongs the clearance of antibiotics, so they are essentially available longer in terms of killing that H. pylori. Pivotal trials with regards to Boquesna were done compared to Lanzaprazol triple therapy. Boquesna comes as a triple pack, which is the venoprazan plus amoxicillin plus clarithromycin, as well as a dual pack which is venoprazan plus high-dose amoxicillin. These pivotal trials showed uh, equivalence or non-inferiority to lanzoprazole clarithromycin-based triple therapy in patients who did not have antibiotic-resistant or clarithromycin or amoxicillin-resistant H. pylori, and they showed superiority of Equesna in patients who had resistant strains of H. pylori. So these are exciting new developments in the evaluation and management of H. pylori. We've got new developments with regards to helping us select what antibiotics are gonna be most effective for our patients in the form of uh, susceptibility testing. And we also have two new therapies available in our armamentarium to treat H. pylori and achieve high eradication rates generally in the range of about 90%. Of course, we need to remember that and anytime we treat H. pylori, we also need to test for cure anywhere from two to four weeks after therapy. Ideally, patients need to be off, well, they really do need to be off uh, anti-secretory therapy for at least two weeks before we test for cure, but that's also another very important aspect of the management of these patients. So I want to thank you for taking the time to listen to me today. I hope this was informative information, and have a great day.